Grace, I really am. Okay, 2 Samuel 16. Let me pray and we'll, we'll jump in. We're gonna pick it up in verse five. 2 Samuel 16, verse five. Lord, what a privilege, once again, to be with your people. These are your people. If you have a fresh word you wanna speak through the camera, through this microphone here in this auditorium, you wanna pipe it to, Indi <laughs> to India, to Iowa, all across the world, and it's, and it's your heart. And so I pray this message would be, it would find soft hearts, attentive ears. You would receive the glory. We'd walk out of here different, having met with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, can you imagine your life, your life, if it was completely immovable and you were totally unoffendable? Think about that for a second, okay? No matter what happened in your life or in my life, you were just never moved. You were unflappable. The chaos could go on in your life and it didn't matter. Or someone could say something about you behind your back or to your face, and, be, and just, you, no, you're, you're not moved. You're not offended. Wouldn't it be the greatest thing in the world to walk through this world and just be so steady that you were just unflappable? Anybody in here with me? Like, like that's been a major like, dream of mine. The problem <laughs> is I'm learning more and more. I am anything but that at times. I mean, sometimes my wife can just look at me the wrong way, and I'm like, really? What? And there's this reaction, I'm like, what, what, what just happened right there? And God's been, he's been dealing with me on this. And I've been asking him to, to highlight stuff, to show me stuff. How many know, by the way, like, as you, as he highlights some of your weaknesses, don't take it as condemnation, take it as coaching. He's wanting to grow us. And he wants to make us more steady, particularly in a world that is just in chaos right now. He's trying to steady his Christians. And here's what he's been speaking to me. I don't know if you can relate to this, but my immovability is connected to my maturity. So what does that mean? I have friends that, you know, solid Christians. I mean, their, their maturity level in the faith, their connection to God, their faith is so strong. And I've seen them walk through the most crazy situations diagnoses and death and disease and just all this wild stuff. And I just look at them and I'm like, they sh many people would just turn and run and just like hate God. They're actually getting deeper with God through the chaos. And I'm like, dude, what's different about you? What is it? It's maturity. Their maturity in Christ is proving what really happened. You know, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trials. He said, build your house on the rock because the rains will come. So I'm finding like, I get exposed at times when circumstantially everything isn't lined up and then I, I'm thrown for a loop. It's funny because I just got finished wrapping up this, the, the end of this study and I was driving, I picked up my wife and I was driving to my son and daughter-in-law's new house to help them bring them some dinner. And I was going through this, inter it was green light and I was just driving right through and some dude is like, he's in the middle of the intersection and he's got a red. He's just right there in front of me. And like, he's gonna continue to go. I'm like, bro, learn how to drive. Like it came out of my mouth and I'm like, oh my goodness, this Bible study is for me. I, I shouldn't be the one preaching about being unoffended. Anybody with me at all in this? Okay, so, okay, I'm preaching the right crowd. Okay, good. How about unoffended? Here's what God's been speaking to me lately. I can tell if I'm growing in this, or let me say it this way. I can tell that I'm not growing in this due to my insecurity. The more insecure I am, the more easily offended I am. And I know this because my wife will, will share something, and she's trying to build me up. She's trying to help me, like a good wife, wives, you know. By the way, make sure they're well fed, you know, they're rested up, and then bring the right tone of voice at, you know, the right timing. And, and even when that happens, I'm just like, oh. 
And what's happening? I'm recognizing there's deep insecurities that I haven't addressed, and my ID is not in JC only, and I'm not so secure in Christ. And so when something is said to me, I get so easily offended. And then you look in the world today, is that you just see everybody flying off the handle so offended. What is it? It's because of lack of identity. We know who we are in Christ. So solid, I'm unoffended. I think about, man, I'd love to live that life. Would you, do you wanna live that life? Here's what I would say. It's impossible in your own strength and in my own strength. Jesus said in John 15, abide in me and you can do anything. But then what did he say? Apart from me, you can do nada for my Espanol speaking people here. Nada. It's connection to Christ. It's in his word, filled with his spirit. This, the fruit of the spirit, what is it? It is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness. And what else? And, oh, let's say that one more time. And self-control. Self-control. Why do I talk about that? Well, we saw David, a picture of Christ, talk about getting accused and reviled and talked trash about. You saw it in this story, and it's funny because we saw David in a previous uh, teaching about freak out, remember when Nabal like, was <laughs> like, uh, dishonoring him, he's about to take him out? So he grew, and now there's a guy named Abishai, or excuse me, Simei, Simei is his name, and, and David, do you remember the story? David basically, uh, there's a coup d'etat, his own son Absalom, kicks him out, and he's leaving town, and this guy Shimei takes rocks and just like throwing rocks at him and his crew and starts like just talking all kinds of trash to him, all kinds of lies, some truth, all kinds of lies. And his homie Abishai, he's like, bro, you want me to just cut his head off real quick? <laughs> you guys, did you guys read this? This is crazy. Like, this is like Hollywood films right here if you just read your Bible. And David's like, no. Let it go. David, unoffended, unmoved, in the worst scenario of his life, his own son trying to kill him, he leaves town. And the question I'm asking as I'm reading this, I'm like, how can I be like David? Do you read the Bible and you're like, man, I wanna be like that. Why am I the opposite? Why am I offended so easily? Why am I so flappable? I just lose my cool if everything isn't completely groovy in my life. You guys wanna learn together? Three people, good. Uh, let's look at the text. You're like, get to the Bible. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm there. Second Samuel 16, verse five. Start with stones. Let's look at these stones. So King David, he came to Behurim, and a man came out of the village cursing them. I underline that in my Bible, cursing them. It was Shimei, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. Now remember, contextually, King Saul was the very first king of Israel. You remember that? And so this guy was part of Saul's family. Well, Saul got rejected from being the king and David took over. So you know he's got some bitterness because of what happened. He threw stones. Everybody say stones. So, so I underline that, stones at the king. Wow, which takes stones and throw stones at the king. And the king's officers and the mighty warriors who surrounded them. Pause there. Have you been like Shimei lately, throwing stones? Have I? I was thinking about when I was a, a young guy, I think I was in middle school somewhere, and one of my friends off 156 in Dodge, he lived right there, and we thought it would be cool early one morning to get some rocks and throw them at cars driving by <laughs> on Dodge Street. <laughs> Yeah, pastor confession, all right, you're sorry. And, and looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking? Obviously, I wasn't, you know. George and Janet were my uh, Sunday school teachers. Why didn't you teach me better, okay? <laughs> it's all your fault, George and Janet's fault. And, and we were getting away with it, and then one dude saw us and like busted a Yui and just was flying. I was like, oh, no! And we were like running to this house. We go into the basement, act like we're sleeping. He knocks on the door. You know, the mom answers. Mom comes out. What are you guys doing? Like, ah, wasn't me. You know, I was like, <laughs> let me just say, 
he didn't have David's response at all. He was out for blood. He was like Abishai waiting to cut my head off. And actually, I probably kind of needed it. I was reading this, and I was thinking about these, these stones that Shimei's throwing at David the leader. And I thought, how, how exact appropriate for our culture right now? I just feel like there's stones being thrown at leaders, at different people. It's just, we're just chucking stones back and forth and we're thinking that's actually gonna do us something good moving forward. Stones. It wasn't just stones though. It was number two, it was shouts. Everybody say shouts. Verse seven, get out of here, you murderer. I mean, he's shouting this. Remember now, you're the king. You're the deposed king on your way out of town and, and this dude, Shimei, who's Shimei, is yelling at you at the top of his lungs. Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel, he shouted at David. The Lord's paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. Now notice this, this is interesting. You stole his throne, total lie. You stole his throne and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last, you'll taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Talk about accusation and venom that's just coming out of Shimei. I was reading in the message translation of this portion at the very end of Shimei. He says, good riddance, you pathetic old man. I was like, that's a low blow, bro. Poor David. Do you have anyone shout in your face sometime? Slander you publicly, behind your back, to your face? Shouting all the way. And, and, and honestly, some of it's true, but there's a whole lot that's not. What do you do? Do you defend yourself? Do you write the email back? Like, you know, what do you, like, what's your response? Remember clearly, I was a senior in college, and talk about shouts. We were playing Texas A&M. I was the quarterback. We were a terrible team. We were down by like 10 points in the fourth quarter, 20 seconds left, no timeouts. I dropped back on my own 20, and you know, there's just no protection. I'm scrambling, and instead of throwing the ball away for another play, I just ran it. The game's over. We weren't gonna win anyways. And after the game, I'm walking back to the locker room and some drunk guy, I think his name was Shimei, actually, some drunk college student, he's like walking alongside. Now, now you gotta put yourself in context. We were terrible. I was the quarterback. For four years, that's all I heard. Doxon, you suck. Put your mom in instead. You're terrible. And for four years, I wouldn't respond. I was like, David, I'm not responding. Till that day. The whole way up to the locker room, he was relentless, just like Shimei, shouting at me. And finally, I just, I lost it. And I stopped, I looked at him, I'm like, I don't know, I'm looking at you, I'll look at Kyle instead. And just, bro, okay, this week, grab your jock strap, beat me out, and if you beat me out at quarterback, you can talk all the trash you want. Until then, shut the, oh. that was before I was a Christian, Kyle, okay, so. And the guy just, Why do I say that? I think we got a lot of drunk college students right now talking about reacting, not responding, losing our minds, throwing stones at leaders. And then you got people like me responding, thinking like I'm doing this guy a favor. Like, do you see what I'm talking about? You got stones flying, you got shouts and insults going all over the place. And remember, contextually, half of it was true. David was a murderer. Remember David, David and Bathsheba? Do you guys remember the story? David the king should be in battle. Instead, he's on the top of his roof. He sees this attractive woman, and he's like, go get her. Has a relationship with her, gets her pregnant, and then tries to get Uriah, her husband, off the battlefield to come sleep with her to kind of cover it up. Because Uriah was a man of integrity, he wouldn't even go home. He's like, no, my, my homies are on the battlefield. I'm not doing it. 
And so David's like, oh, snap, what do I do now? Sends, sends Uriah back to the front lines to be killed. David was a murderer. But he didn't take Saul's throne. Saul gave up his throne because of his disobedience. And God said, I'm gonna remove it from Saul and give it to David. And yet Shimei, a relative of Saul, is throwing this out at him, which was simply not true. You go, what does this have to do with me? Because we're all in it. Some of us are actively like Shimei, throwing the stones and shouting at people and condemning and pointing fingers. I always say, man, I got boogers on my own nose. I, I have a tough time pointing fingers at someone else. Matter of fact, when I'm pointing one finger, I got three right back at me. And stones are flying. Like That's what's happening. So, so some of us are like Shimei, and then, but here's the thing, some of us, we're not, man, we've grown, we're maturing, but now we're taking the attack. We're, many of us are like David right now, and it seems like every time you show up to work, you got someone talking to you, either to your front or to your back. The question is, how are we gonna respond? That's really what we're, I think God's growing us in this season. At least he's growing me. It's, it's funny, as a pastor, you get a lot of emails, and uh, it's interesting how a lot of it is true. This is no excuse, but what I share a lot of times is I'm definitely not perfect leading a church. I didn't, it wasn't like I was reincarnated and I planted a church in my previous life and I know how to do everything. So there's a lot of things I do wrong. But one of the things that hurt me probably deeper than anything, I, I got an email one time and it was this lady. And you ever get an email that's all caps, by the way? <laughs> The all caps email is like, oh no, like put your seatbelt on, like easily offended, moved, like ah, you know, it's like, and it was like, you call yourself a pastor. The only reason you're a pastor is you can't do anything else. All you ex-athletes, that's all you do. Yeah, it's like, ah. Was I offended? Was I moved? Was I hurt? Okay, what? Well, Who do you think you are? You know, it's so cool. In that moment, I promise you, it was like a grace of God and God spoke to me. There's something going on in her heart and her soul where she's been hurt by maybe an ex-athlete or something and she's processing it and she's not uh, processing it well with me. So pray for her right now and do not respond. Is there part truth to her email? Yeah, like, I still don't know what I'm doing as a pastor, let's be honest. But my heart, what's my heart? My genuine heart is for you to experience God's best. What I do is authentic. Is it perfect? Absolutely not, but it's authentic. I want you to experience God's best for your life, for sure. Are there not a lot of things that I could do? That is true. But how do we handle it? I, I, as, as your jot notes, write down solutions. That's your point number three because there's all kinds of solutions. And let's look at one option. Look at uh, verse nine. Here's option A. You guys ready for it? Option A uh, is, is Abishai's option. And look what he says. Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Abishai, son of Zariah, demanded. Let me go over and cut off his head. Don't you just love friends like that, by the way? Are they gonna talk trash? Okay. Look what the king, hold up, man. Pump the brakes. Who asked your opinion? Okay. The Lord has told him to curse me. Who are you to stop him? So option A, when someone throws stones, someone shouts insults, option A, cut, just cut their head off. <laughs> just take them out. I love you guys, and there's a lot of protectors in here. Where, where are my moms at, by the way? I love you moms. You're so sweet and caring. Someone starts messing with your kids, you will cut someone's head off. You get that look, like, you know, like, talking about Johnny? You just do wild stuff. I love you guys. <laughs> this happened to me, actually, as a parent. One of our boys was, well, both of our boys, we have twins, they were 14. We were teaching them to drive. We were at Nebraska Crossing, and um, it was Zion. He was backing out of a parking spot. 
and just barely going, and some lady came, like backed into him, and it was totally her fault. She pulls him apart, and she gets out, and she's crying, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that, I'm so sorry. My husband's gonna kill me, I'm so sorry. And we're like, hey, it's all right, accidents happen, it's all good. You know, we exchange insurance and that kind of stuff. A few days later, I get a call from the insurance and she twisted her story talking about it was, it was my son that actually ran into her. I'm guessing she was fearful for her husband, what he would, I don't know. And I'm like, no, you ain't about to do that. I went from like pastor, lost my salvation, lost my mind, cutting off heads, all that kind of stuff. Until my son, who disciples me many times in, in responding, not reacting, he's like, Dad, hold on, man, hold on. 14, true story. He goes, Dad, hold on. I'm gonna draw a, a little picture of what happened. We're gonna take a picture of it, send it to the insurance companies. It's all gonna be good. I was like, that is not gonna work. <laughs> Two days later, absolutely. They're like, yeah, no problem. It's their fault. We'll give you the check. It's all good. <laughs> I'm cutting off heads. And my son is like the logical, steady Eddie, not moved. I'm like, can I just be like Zion, please? Cut off the head. Option A. Option B, David's option, let it go. Maybe you came to church today and the only thing you came that you needed to hear, let it go. You've been carrying unforgiveness, bitterness, regret, all these things for all these years, and what has the fruit been? Maybe it's today, God is just saying, let it go. Let God deal with them. Don't let it continue to rattle you and move you. Be unoffended, unmoved, move on in life and let it go, and that's option B. Look, look what David says. This is fascinating to me. This is a man of power, prestige, the king. Verse 11, David said to Abishai and to all his servants, my own son's trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more of a reason to do so? And this hit me, Look, underline this. Leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to do it. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. I mean, my goodness. What a response. Are you kidding me? Just let it go. Just let him keep on cursing. Maybe it's God. And at the end of the day, God's gonna probably deal with him. So we're just gonna continue to be steady, immovable, unoffended. We're moving forward in life. And you know what? Just let it happen. When I was studying this, I was thinking about the people in the Bible that I've read about, even just the people in the world that are the most unoffendable and immovable. Just, just think about that for a second. As you read the scriptures, who are some of the key people? I'll tell you, tell you one of mine, the Apostle Paul. Remember the Apostle Paul? In Acts 20, 24, and Paul went through everything. I mean, he was shipwrecked. He was like naked in the deep for a while. He had all kinds of people causing chaos in his life. And he said it, I think it's in Acts 20, 24. He said, but none of these things move me. I'm like, What? None of these things move me. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna continue to move in my purpose in life, and none of these things are gonna move me. I think about Stephen. Remember Stephen the martyr in, in the book of Acts? And they're, they're literally, talk about stones, they're literally stoning Stephen to death, and as he's dying, you know what he says? Let their charge not be counted against them. What? I'd be like, charge them up and get them now. Stephen is like, no. But you know who the ultimate one is? Jesus himself. What was Jesus' response when he was falsely accused, when they were hurling accusations about him, when they were br brutally beating him, we're talking the king of the universe in human flesh. He could have snapped his fingers and angels could have came down and zapped all the homies. He's on the cross and people are literally saying, if you're really God, hop off that cross and prove who you are. And what does Jesus do for you and I? He says, Father, this is wild, write it down. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. 
This is a whole nother level of Christianity because what's happening now is we're just exchanging bombs, Christian to non-Christian, this politician to that person, and we're just, just exchanging, just throwing stones at each other. Next level Christianity is where we see like Jesus and have a heart like Jesus, and we're connected so much that we go, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Thanks, Dave. I, Dave's with me. Thank you, Dave. But this, what are, the reason you're clapping is it's resounding in your heart and soul, and you're like, dude, no, there's something better for the church today. The Bible beating and the pointing fingers, and I got it figured out, and all y'all lost people don't, has to go. There's a message that he's putting in souls right now. You know why people don't come back to church or don't come back to God? Because us. What if we just went to another level? None of these things move me. Father, forgive them. Don't charge it to their account. Unoffended, unmoved. It'll change the world. A policy won't change the world. This won't change the world. That will change the world. Grace of God and power to stay steady in the middle of all the pressure and all the chaos, that changes the world. It does. Totally does. Now, <laughs> verse 13, David stays steady. And look, look what happens in verse 13. So David and his men continued down the road and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hillside. <laughs> this guy's relentless. This reminds me of the drunk college kid. I mean, he, was, he kept pace with him on the nearby hillside, cursing and throwing stones and dirt at David. The king and all who were with him grew weary along the way. You ever been just so weary, just so tired of all the junk, all the accusations, all the chaos? So they rested when they reached the Jordan River. David stays steady. Doesn't cut a head off. He says, no, let him go. Continues on his way. And it took time, but over time, what happened? His throne was given back to him because Absalom, his son, who was trying to take over, ended up getting killed. You remember that story? It's so crazy. It said that Absalom had this like Troy Palomalo type like hair, you know, like the head and shoulders commercial. And he was riding his mule and it got like stuck into a tree and he's like hanging there in the battle. And then Joab goes and wipes him out with like three spears and takes him out. And they come back and tell King David, King David's weeping, it's your son, but something had to be done. And then all Israel are like, dude, we, we, Absalom's dead. Who's gonna be our king? We want you back. So King David, what does he do? King David was leaving town. Now he's coming back to town. And if you read your Bible, it's super interesting in chapter 19 what happens. Who's one of the first people that greets King David on his way back? Shimei. David let God deal with it, and now he comes back. God works his his sovereign plan. And as he comes back into town, look at it, 2 Samuel 19, uh, the second half of verse 18. You got, you got to see it. So crazy. 2 Samuel 19, shipped over there. Verse 18, the second half, says, as the king was about to cross the river, Shimei fell down before him. That'd probably be a good thing to do after all that talk, that trash talking. My Lord, the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know how much I sinned. You know one of the biggest things that keeps people from God? That right there, not just owning up to what we have done. The best place you can be before God is completely transparent and humble. We had a guy um, at the nine o'clock who was baptized share his story. It was super vulnerable, but I'm telling you, that's where the power comes when you, when you can be that real. Shimei, that's why I've come here today, the very first person in all Israel to greet my Lord, the king. Verse 21, then Abishai, son of Zariah, said, Shimei should die. <laughs> this guy's relentless. I still wanna cut his head off. He cursed the Lord's anointed king. Yeah, who asked your opinion? David exclaimed, <laughs> pipe down, bro. Why have you become my adversary today? And this hit me. This is not a day for execution. For today, I'm once again the king of Israel. Then, now picture this, you're Shimei. 
the king turns to Shimei, David vowed, your life will be spared. Wow. This guy's life is spared. David's sanity is spared. God works through this whole process because of David's response through stones and shouts coming straight at him. And it brings me back to the original question. How, how are you handling the stones and the shouts? How am I? What's the solution you and I, have been, are we cutting heads off? Are we giving grace? How, how are we handling this? I'll close with this last story. It's pretty wild. And I'm sorry if I'm talking too much about myself, but I'm, I'm just trying to be real with my life so you can maybe connect it with your life as well and some of the junk you go through. There was, um, in the last, I don't know, couple months, there were two young guys that came to me and just apologized to me. It, it was interesting because, you know, I didn't really know anything about it, but they had left the church and they, they said they were talking different stuff or whatever. And they just came to me as a man face to face and said, will you please forgive me um, for my immaturity? You know what was really cool about that? That takes courage, man. Those are the kind of guys I'll be around all day long. Just throwing stones. And, and it was cool because I looked at him, I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Please forgive me. I, I, I'm sure I, I, you know, disrespected you. I overlooked something. Will you please forgive me? You know what? In both cases, we prayed for one another, hugged each other, and, and moved forward. Can you imagine a world like that? <laughs> Humility, to me, as I read this, is the key. That's the heart, Amen. Lord, thanks for this, this challenge for all of us. And forgive us when we grab stones so quick to throw back. And I pray even, even now there would be just a beautiful movement at this church in pressure situations, no matter what the attack is, we would respond as empowered by your spirit. Never back down from the truth but speak the truth in love with grace and tact and humility. Not just this church, all throughout the city, all throughout the world, just a, a maturing of our faith, growing deeper in our identity in you for your glory. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna just um, have an opportunity to respond, I'm not sure what, God speaking to you in this season. Also wanted to give you, a, if you're a Christian in here, actually everybody in here, just, just one piece of homework. I like the Bible, I love the Bible. I love it even more when it becomes practical. Here, here's your challenge. Get uncomfortable and ask the Lord to have you respond. Now, most of us, we live in pressured workplaces, school, houses, so for most of us, this will happen just by default. Some of you guys that are on easy street right now, and for whatever reason, everything is gravy, I would challenge you just by your own free will, get uncomfortable somehow. Go to a CrossFit workout or something. Don't eat for two days. Something that will bring you in an uncomfortable situation and ask the Lord to give you grace in that space to respond, not react we can all grow. I also wanna to speak to anybody in here, you've never given your life to Christ, you've, you're not a Christian, you're not a bad person, but you've just never bowed your knee and said, yes, I'm all in. The, the, the Bible is very clear. The creator of the world, God, he is perfect, he's holy, he's just. The rest of us humans, as, try as we might, we'll, we're still gonna blow it but because God can't have anything to do with any type of sin, there's a separation between God and man. And, and God's like, man, I don't want that to be forever. I'm gonna go to this planet, live the perfect life they couldn't, die the death in their place. I'm gonna be buried in that tomb. Three days later, I'm gonna rise from the grave, proving who I am. And then I'm gonna just release my spirit throughout the earth and just invite people into relationship. And that's really the opportunity. Let's stand together because as we 
Give this opportunity. There's people maybe listening online. You might be in India, Iowa. You might be here right now. And you go, man, I need to make peace with God. As I was studying this, I, if you can put the text back up, I think Shimei's response at the very end was so good. Do you remember it? He, as the king was about to cross, Shimei fell down before him. Remember in this story, David's a picture, a type of Christ. Shimei is a picture of all of us sinners. He falls down, posture of humility. My Lord, the king, please forgive me. That's what he's looking for. Forget all that I've done. I know how much I've sinned. So we wanna open up this area right now. God's speaking, in a minute, the band's gonna play a song. And I would just challenge Christians, if you don't absolutely have to be somewhere right now, just tune in for the next five minutes and pray for all the people in here. There's people that have never received Christ. Salvation, forgiveness, peace, joy. They've never made the great exchange and today's their day. So just begin to pray. God's speaking to you. You say, man, I need to make peace with God today. I need to bow my knee. You get out of your seat, wherever you're at, you come forward. I'll lead you in a prayer. The prayer is simple, but profound. God, open up my heart. I invite you inside, forgive me. I wanna, I wanna go to heaven one day because of the grace of Jesus Christ. If that's your heart, again, don't wait another day. Just like these baptees, baptizees, send it, man. Go all in and begin this journey, this relationship with God, amen? So church, begin to pray. Band, go ahead and play. If God's speaking to you, you come forward right now. There's freedom here in your presence. There's hope and fullness of joy. There's freedom here in your presence. In your presence. In your presence. I'm trading morning for dancing. I'm trading sorrow for joy. There's freedom here in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. There's freedom here in your presence. There's hope and fullness of joy. There's freedom here in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. I'm trading morning for dancing. I'm trading sorrow for joy. There's freedom here in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. There's freedom here in your presence. There's hope and fullness of joy. There's freedom here in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. I love it. We speak this last word. We're not singing any longer. Those of you that are debating. You're like, man, I feel something in me. I, I know I need to be up there, but what, were, what will people think? What will people think? You know what people will think? They'll be like, amen, hallelujah, because I'm that person too. They'll celebrate. So we're not singing any longer. You go, man, I know I need to bow my knee to the king come clean, ask for forgiveness. I want to go to heaven. If there's, if there's anybody in here, you have any doubt in your mind where you're going when you die, make peace with God right now. I sat with a lady in her 60s this week who went to meet Jesus. We got to pray for her and sing over her. And she's, she's meeting Jesus face to face. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. This is not to scare you into heaven. This is the reality of the human existence. Do you want forgiveness and peace and you want your name written in the book of life? Is there anybody here today? You come now. Come now, don't wait another day. You say, man, I don't know what to do after that. Don't worry about it, God's got you. Anybody here at church, he's stirring in your heart. He's reaching out his hand. You could be in the nosebleeds. Maybe someone, one of your friends brought you. Your friend can come with you, encourage you start today the great exchange all right
I trust everybody's good here in the auditorium. Maybe I speak to someone online. You guys want to help pray, maybe lead someone that's listening right now. God's speaking to you. Today's your day. Just stop what you're doing. Put the fork down and pray this prayer. Lord God, I open up my heart. I invite you inside to be my God, to be my Savior, to be my friend. Forgive me of all my sin and wash me clean. I've decided today to follow you, Jesus. From this day forward, I'm all in. Fill me with your spirit and lead me a life of love for your glory and to help a ton of people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's celebrate by faith all of those receiving Christ online. God bless you guys.